wonderful night this is um, to be here at St. John Vianney Parish on this Easter Vigil. Tonight, um, thousands of people throughout the world um, will be baptized and confirmed and receive their, their First Communion. Um, people in Africa, people in Asia, Europe, North America, South America, all throughout the world, People will be baptized, confirmed, and receive their first communion tonight. And tonight we have Brian and Timothy and Jack and Carrie and Seppi Day um, who will experience confirmation and first communion and baptism this night. I want to just reflect a little bit upon the, the sacraments and especially baptism and, and confirmation tonight. Um, sacraments, according to the, the Catholic Church, are efficacious signs of grace instituted by Christ and entrusted um, to the church through which divine life is given. So sacraments are efficacious signs of grace. Um, they bring about grace. They give us grace. They impart grace. Um, they're instituted by Christ. Um, so Jesus in his earthly ministry in different ways instituted these sacraments. Um, they're entrusted to the church. Um, they've been entrusted to the church since the very beginning all the way up until now. And through them, um, divine life is given. And of course, um, there are seven sacraments, um, baptism, confirmation, um, Eucharist, reconciliation, anointing of the sick, matrimony, and holy orders. And the way that the sacraments work is that there's two parts to them. And there's the matter part, and there's the form part. Um, the matter part is the tangible part. Um, and as Catholics, um, we believe that, that the things of this world, the things that God has created, are good. So we use the things of this world in the sacraments. Um, we use water and oil, and we use unleavened bread, and we use wine, um, which is really made from grapes, of course. And in marriage, um, the matter is the couple themselves. And, and so it's, there's a very um, concrete part to that. Um, we can see water, we can see oil, we can see bread, we can see wine. And there's a very practical part to that. I mean, you can find water throughout the world. You can find oil. You can find um, bread. And you can find wine. And so um, there's the matter part. Um, there's also the form part. And the form part is the words that we say um, in these sacraments, um, the words that bring about um, the sacrament um, through, through the priest and through those who are receiving them. And these words are very much connected to Jesus. Um, they're very much connected to the scriptures um, themselves. And, and so, you know, when we think of the matter, the water, the oil, the bread, and the wine, um, they're symbolic also. Um, so they're real and they're symbolic. And there's something deeper um, behind them that we're trying to express, we're trying to communicate. So, for instance, and when you think about water, um, water we use in baptism, and water is connected to life. So, naturally, and without water, um, we, would, we would die. Um, it's the source of life in so many, so many ways. And so spiritually, it becomes the source of spiritual life. And tonight, in a particular way for um, Sepi Day, it will become the source of spiritual life. And, you know, it, when we think of water, again, on this earth, and when it springs up from a spring under the earth, and it comes up to the surface, and it gives life. Um, water is also a symbol of death, um, especially the water of the sea, when a storm comes, um, the water of the sea can cause death. And so both of those come together tonight in baptism. 
Um, Jesus is offering you new life, Sepine. Um, through his death he, and his resurrection, um, he is offering you new life in him. New life in him. We, we also talked about um, the experience of the Red Sea for the people of Israel. The Red Sea um, represents um, freedom. It represents liberation. Um, it represents the freedom from sin and death that we experience um, through baptism. And we also remember um, the Israelites crossed um, the Jordan River into the promised land. And so um, water also represents eternal life. We also are going to use oil tonight. We're going to use the sacred chrism, um, the oil of the catechumens, um, two different oils. Um, on a natural level, um, especially in this day and age, of course, we have things like essential oils, um, you know, frankincense, um, basil, or oregano, um, all kinds of different oils. And these oils um, help us um, on a natural level to be healthy. Um, oil makes us um, feel good also. Um, it actually helps the body to work better. Um, it helps us to function better. Um, it soothes us when we're bruised and when we're wounded. Um, oil smells good. It brings beauty, health, and strength, and it's a sign of abundance and joy. I mean, all of that's true just on a natural level. Um, but in the Bible, um, one of the uses of oils is that it, through it, um, we experience healing. And we have the oil of the sick, which we're not going to use tonight, but and we use that oil um, to pray for healing, to pray for physical, spiritual, emotional, psychological healing. And then we have the oil of the catechumens and the sacred chrism. Um, the oil of the catechumens happens um, before baptism, um, and so you will receive that as well right before baptism. And the, the spiritual significance is that it cleanses you and strengthens you for baptism. And then all five of you will receive the sacred chrism. And the sacred chrism is, has a lot of rich meaning. It's connected um, to the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, when you think of the Holy Spirit, you can't touch the Holy Spirit. You can't see the Holy Spirit. Um, sometimes you can feel the Holy Spirit. Um, and so, again, oil helps us to make that connection. Um, the Holy Spirit connects us um, to God the Father and to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, um, as we receive this anointing, we're actually supposed to give off um, the aroma of Christ. So um, the fact that oil smells good helps us with that. And after baptism... Normally, you would receive the sacred chrism. Um, today, you'll receive that in confirmation. But it's a sign of, of consecration. Um, it connects us um, to the church. Um, I don't know if you realize this, but the oils that we have tonight that we're going to use, um, we're blessed um, by the bishop on Monday at the chrism mass. And um, this happens every year. There's three big things of oil. He blesses them, and then they distribute them. I um, mean, our diocese, they distribute them to over 100 churches. Um, so we picked up our oils, um, and we have them tonight. And I was, you know, looking at the, the blessing that the bishop does. It's actually very long, and I, I want to just share a part of it with you. Um, the blessing that the bishop prayed over this oil, um, the sacred chrism, a part of it goes like this. And therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil and its richness, and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name of chrism. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life 
and sharers of heavenly glory. And through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So that's the oil we're using tonight. And when you think of the, the sacraments themselves, especially again, baptism and confirmation, um, it's interesting that word baptism, it actually means to plunge into, um, to immerse yourself. And what you're doing, Sepi Day, through baptism is you're plunging into the waters of baptism and you're uniting yourself um, with Jesus in his death, in his burial. And from him, then you're receiving this new life through his resurrection. And you become a new creature, a new creation. Um, it's a bath that purifies, that justifies, and that sanctifies. And sanctifies means um, to make holy. Um, it also, interestingly, brings about enlightenment. Um, it's called enlightenment, enlightenment because those who receive um, baptism become the true light, um, receive the word, receive the word of God, which is the true light that enlightens every man and woman. And the person that's baptized has become enlightened. And through baptism tonight, you will become a daughter of a light, and indeed, even light itself. Um, this enlightenment is received. And of course, um, the matter for, for baptism is water, and the form is, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And through baptism, um, you're going to receive an indelible mark on your soul, um, something that can never be taken away. Um, and, and then we have, lastly, um, confirmation. Um, confirmation, again, is there's so much happening in confirmation. I mean, it brings about an increase and a deepening of the baptismal grace. It roots us more deeply um, in our understanding as children of God, um, as, as knowing God as Father. I mean, it unites us more firmly to Christ. It increases the gifts of the Holy Spirit in us. It strengthens us to spread and defend the word of God and to be true witnesses of Christ. And the matter for confirmation is, first I'm going to lay my hands on you, I'm on, your, on, your, on your head, imparting the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to anoint you as sacred chrism, which also um, leaves an indelible mark. And it, and it imprints a spiritual seal upon your soul. Um, and this is connected to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. God has put his seal upon us and given the spirit in our hearts as a first installment. And, you know, the words for, for the confirmation, I mean, it's interesting we asked all of you to, to pick a saint's name. I mean, it's kind of a strange thing, and in fact, I'm going to call you by the saint's name. I mean, it's a tradition of the church, and this saint that you picked um, will be a special intercessor for you um, throughout your whole life. And so, whichever one you picked, will be a special intercessor for you, and I encourage you um, to think of it as you can have a spiritual relationship um, with this saint, and that this saint wants to help um, guide you um, to heaven. And not only does it connect you to this individual saint that you picked, um, it also connects you to all the saints, um, the communion of saints, and um, there are so many saints um, that we can have spiritual relationships with. And so I will call you by your, the saint's name, and then I will say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And again, for all of you, there'll be an indelible mark on your soul that can never be taken away. I mean, it's interesting, oil like absorbs into your body, and it becomes part of you. And confirmation, in a sense, spiritually absorbs into your body and becomes part of you. It leaves this indelible mark on your soul. And, and so, you know, tonight you are going to 
experience um, the sacraments um, for the first time. And I just encourage you, as I did before Mass, to open your hearts um, to receive all that God has for you tonight, um, to surrender yourself to him, and um, to trust, um, to trust that he has brought you here. Um, he has brought you here because he wants um, to bless you, and he's going to do that um, through the sacraments. And so we pray for, for that, and we pray for all of that tonight. And we do this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.